Hi all, greetings from Russia, where I'm staying with my family at our dacha, which is a fairy tale house in the woods. And I wanted to use this opportunity to ask my parents, who have nothing to do with mathematics, about their experience of getting a glimpse of the math world. But it turned out that the lack of traveling during this and last year did not have a good effect on my dad's capacity to speak English, so it will be just my mom, although my dad is also really fun. <laughs> Also, it's important for me to clarify that although I complain in the interviews about different aspects of life in Russia, I've had the happiest childhood in St. Petersburg, which is truly the best city in the world. And if you want to have more positive impressions of math life in Russia and see some beautiful photos of my homeland, then I highly recommend you to check out the project Mathematica by my interviewee Olga paris Romaskevich. Olga is preparing an exhibition and a companion book around 10 portraits of Russian women in mathematics in different cities all over Russia, from Khabarovsk to St. Petersburg. And to prepare the exhibition, she is traveling through Russia right now, and I'm posting the links related to her project in the description below. So, Meet my mother, Yelena Yuzbashyan, who is a philologist and a language teacher specializing in Latin and ancient Greek. Welcome, mom, and sorry for all the mistakes in English that I make in the interviews. <laughs> I'm very glad to be here. <laughs> so let's start with a warm-up question. Who invented algebraic key theory? Uh, Alexandre Grothendieck. Yay! I'm proud of you. So, how did you feel about mathematics at school? In my time, it totally depended on the teacher. Uh, my uh, mathematics teacher was a very, very good and very interesting, and uh, it was very important for us then that she was a non-conformist person. Uh, so, we loved her and we loved the subject. Uh, and what did you think about me being interested in math rather than continuing family's path in humanities? Uh, it never occurred to me that you uh, had to continue somehow with the family tradition. And I was just, um, I was afraid of missing your choice. And uh, when you were uh, in the primary school, uh, it was a very happy time in our modern history that uh, we had very new, uh, many new opportunities and our dreams come, came true. We could travel all over the world and um, after the Soviet regime. And so we used to take you to different museums and places following your interests and your hobbies. Once when you were interested in uh, biology, we took you to um, nature museums, science museums. So it was a happy time and um, uh, from the very beginning, actually, I was sure that you were going to choose something else. <laughs> so you, did you have a hope that I would change my mind or not? Mm, no, why hope? Uh, I didn't think that it was somehow better. Um, I remember two episodes um, when I realized that you, you were going to be something quite different. Uh, once it was in, uh, in Moscow when we were uh, watching a theater performance after uh, Dostoevsky, the uh, brothers Karamazov, um, and it was a scene when the boys visiting uh, their uh, ill friend are discussing um, um, some chemical questions and making a little bomb and speaking about the proportion um, of these uh, chemical ingredients and then uh, you whispered in my ear the proportion is not correct <laughs> and I think you were the only person uh, in the theatre who uh, thought about such things not about the actors or uh, the decorations or the ideas of Dostoevsky and so on. 
another another episode took place in uh, Italy in Porta dei Marmi. We were standing on the beach in the evening, watching the sea um, and uh, watching the uh, beautiful Carrara mountains behind. And we were looking at the, the coast and the villages. And you suddenly compare the row um, of evening lights in the houses with the distribution of primes. <laughs> no comment. I should be honest with the audience and say that we are refilming this little bit of the interview because it turned out that I got it all wrong when I was a kid about the distribution of prime numbers. <laughs> and I could not leave it in the interview as it was. <laughs> well, uh, another very short comment of yours from your early childhood. Uh, you overheard some uh, adult talk um, and you heard the word non-conformist and asked what did it mean and when told uh, you said I know how to be a non-conformist. One should just find a non-conformist and copy him. <laughs> I'm still doing it. So, so for me uh, it all was uh, some um, different Weltanschauung in the very direct sense of the word. Different way of looking at the world and seeing it. And um, maybe I would call it a more structural one. <laughs> when you were a child, uh, the young mothers in my generation used to read books about uh, bringing up children uh, because we didn't have uh, mobile phones at our disposal and the internet. Uh, one of the most popular books was uh, Baby and Child Care by Benjamin Spoke. And uh, I remember such phrase um, uh, that if you uh, don't know how to realize that the child is uh, sick, just watch him. He, when he is sick, he looks or acts queerly. <laughs> so, my child, being absolutely healthy, very often looked or acted queerly. <laughs> so, <laughs> I knew that something is going to happen uh, later and uh, that it is something unexpected. Mm. Uh, in your state of mind and your choices and mm, your preferences. So, uh, since you're a language teacher, I'm wondering, from my stories, did you make an impression? What is the difference between studying math and languages? In studying languages, uh, there is some very important thing uh, that uh, any level makes sense, even when you are at the very beginning, uh, even you just uh, when you are learning something about new language. So uh, it is always uh, fruitful. It always makes sense to you and uh, gives you a lot. Uh, as for mathematics, I think that uh, um, it is different. So this school level is not so meaningful um, and uh, also when learning languages you never get stuck if you are reading something uh, some very difficult text uh, like poetry of a, a contemporary poet in a foreign language and you do not understand the whole uh, depth of uh, metaphors and uh, of the system of images, you don't feel that you get stuck. Uh, you are reading more and more, you are uh, using more dictionaries, you are reading about this uh, person and um, every moment uh, you are uh, getting richer, if, you may, if I may say so. Um, 
But what if you you cannot translate some sentence in an old text? Aren't you stuck then? Um, it it never irritates. Uh, it is it is very nice um, and interesting subject to discuss with your colleagues. Um, and a pleasant riddle, not more. It is. Um, it doesn't make you crazy. <laughs> Maybe you could do math and also enjoy the riddles. Maybe it depends on your on your attitude. <laughs> uh, well, um, I don't think so. It's not an attitude. Just uh, humanities are in general uh, much easier, <laughs> um, easier from the psychological point of view. If I if I got your meaning, listening to your interviews. Oh, so do you now take more seriously the psychological struggles of doing math after the interviews? Uh, yes, of course, definitely. Hmm, great, I'm very glad about it. So what have you learned from the interviews or what has surprised you? <laughs> what surprised me was that you were not unique in your struggles first. What I uh, liked a lot was that uh, formula uh, in the very last interview uh, about what is research, that when you are uh, looking at the uh, blackboard, <laughs> not understanding anything at all, this is um, not a pause, this is research itself. That's what I liked very much. Uh, such a simple thing, but when pronounced and formulated, it sounds quite different. Uh, and I think it is different in the humanities. Something quite different is called research in the humanities. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. As you saw from the interviews on my channel, uh, there is one writer who is particularly popular among mathematicians, at least in my selection, and that is Proust. So I like the tradition. So what is your story with reading Proust? <laughs> I had time to read uh, the whole six volumes from the first word to the last one. Or seven. Uh, uh, or seven. It was just when you were born and I had to stay at home for some time. And uh, when you were going to bed in the evening, I had my private time. <laughs> and it was totally devoted to Proust. What do you think is so appealing in his writing to mathematicians? Mm, maybe it is, a, it, it is an example of a perfect, absolute analysis analysis of the text, of the mechanism of remembering, of the role of associations, bringing the reader to the very, very uh, uh, basis of the human being and self-reflecting. Interesting. I haven't thought of it. When you first met my colleagues, was there anything that particularly impressed or surprised you about mathematicians? <laughs> yes, if they don't mind. But uh, when uh, they visited our place, I noticed that uh, everyone was uh, sort of delivering a speech and uh, those separate speeches were not coordinated somehow, were uh, self-sufficient. Not that they were not listening to each other, Maybe they were listening to, but it looked like this. Uh, or us, and 
it was really strange, but I mean, uh, it was a talk on mathematics where we didn't participate and we couldn't understand what it was about, <laughs> just uh, the um, outer impression. You mean that everyone had their monologue instead of having a discussion? Uh, yes, um, yes, maybe it was not something unpolite, just a different way of uh, uh, having a common talk. <laughs> at the table, just unusual, something very unusual. I remember that they didn't bother to include you in the conversation. No, but it didn't bother us at all, absolutely not. Uh, it was a very, very new um, impression and uh, we wanted uh, them feel comfortable. That was the first and the last uh, wish. So what do you like the most about my math life? <laughs> From the very beginning up to now, uh, I'm just absolutely fasc fascinated that you know things that I can't even imagine, <laughs> not that I <laughs> simply not understand, I just can't imagine uh, um, anything. <laughs> what you know very well. <laughs> it is for, for every um, parent. It is, it, I think it is a fascinating idea, not for me personally, but for everybody <laughs> who is in the same position. Uh, that you have your own universe that I uh, can only uh, watch from outside not even dreaming to enter. And uh, like many other uh, people who deal with humanities, uh, of course I was a um, latent admirer of mathematicians. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I, I could understand uh, what a fantastic world it is. And now you helped me to learn more about it, recommending. Uh, some books for dummies, <laughs> which, which I read by, have read already, uh, many of them. Has uh, mathematics uh, ever come up in your work ever since you finished high school? Mathematics uh, is an important uh, subject in the history of antiquity in the history of ancient Greek, for example. Yes, it is a very, very important part of uh, its culture, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if I remember it correctly, that um, thing, what we call uh, science today was invented then and there. And um, all those stars of science uh, uh, in ancient Greece, so formed this uh, civilization, uh, not only um, tragedies and comedies, um, and uh, that's why those who used to think uh, about ancient history and culture, they uh, more or less uh, also thought about <laughs> mathematics and uh, its fate the lines of its destiny. I guess you mean the idea of the proof, because mm -hmm. from what I remember there were lots of computations obtained, for example, in ancient Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, but um, exactly. from what I read, the, the and, proofs... And Babylon, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. The abstract proofs mm -hmm. started appearing in ancient Greece as an idea. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the point is that uh, in the other um, countries in Egypt and Babylon and other places, uh, all those uh, computations had some uh, practical uh, uh, meaning and uh, only the Greeks uh, decided to prove and uh, to discover something quite <laughs> unpractical, <laughs> uh, like the, the idea to prove that the diameter divides the circle, yes, um, into uh, equal 
parts, it has nothing to do with practical life. Uh, and um, so Alice thought about it and uh, did it um, from pure research um, interest. From so for the end, what do you wish to me as a young mathematician? I wish uh, to you never to stop admiring the beauty and magic mathematics, to, uh, not to stop being um, charmed. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now meet Elisa, the wisest creature in my family.